So today we're going to do a furnace clean and tune, but this furnace is actually an oil furnace. And I'm just going to show you what we generally do to take care of an oil furnace for a heating season. So your oil furnace should be equipped with an oil filter somewhere in that fuel line. We're going to replace this oil filter. So the first thing to do is close off your oil line supply. And I usually do this first before servicing the burner, which is in the furnace over there because I don't want to have any oil spill over by the furnace. It's very important that you have some rags and the container handy to catch the oil. And loosen our filter. Now your new filter should come with a new seal for that. After you dump that out, there's usually a little bit of sludge in the bottom. Just wipe out the interior. Get all the sludge that's built up in the bottom of there. It's a bummer, but your hands are going to smell bad after this. Now I usually feel around this upper lip to make sure there were no floating sludges. Not a bad idea to wipe that surface down too. And then your new filter should hopefully come with a new seal and a new seal for this bleeder screw. That's really nasty. Yeah, look at that. What's it smell like? <laughs> uh -huh. It smells probably like swamp as usual. Yeah, that's about right. Pretty swampy. Nice, good work. So here's the new filter. And that bolt that sticks up in the bottom just presses into the hole in the filter. Just like this. So all of the, all of the unfiltered oil has to go through filter media before it can get into the system. We have a new seal, which I generally like to wet slightly with the oil to prevent it from sticking to the body. There's a new bleeder, key, bleeder screw gasket and a new locking bolt gasket. Now we can just thread this back on. Make sure everything appears to be lining up properly. Go as tight as you can with your hands. And then a couple cranks more on the bolt. And with that out of the way, we can now move to the burner. So the first thing you're going to do at the burner is loosen this screw and this screw. Power is currently off to this unit. But then you can slip those tabs like that. And that reveals the springs of our coil, which is 10,000 volts usually but only like, I don't know, a third of an amp or so. So it's actually not quite as bad as it sounds. I mean, it's nothing to sneeze at, but oh yeah, 0.2 amps. So a fifth of an amp. Down in here, we've got our two electrodes and our burner tube. Yours might be a little bit different. It might come in on the side a little bit further forward than this one does. Right up here on the top of this is our flame sensor and it uses a light detecting sensor, I'm trying to remember what it's called right now, to detect if there's any light, so you just want to inspect that, make sure it's not soot covered, because if it is, then it sometimes won't sense that there's a ball of flame in there. Our blower wheel also looks good. Sometimes those fins can get loose and come apart. I've seen that before. On this one, we have to remove this cover on the back. 7 sixteenths. Yeah, it is. This is our supply line. This line's actually really high pressure. This pump on the end of the motor pumps it up to over 100 PSI. So this is our adjustment. And we're not going to change that. We should now be able to pull assembly out. I'm going to be careful not to spill oil like that. I should have my oil bucket over here. Okay, so I just brought our nozzle back out to the van. So how this is supposed to work is you've got two electrodes and that high voltage comes out to these two points on the end. And when that arcs, it actually makes kind of a, like an arch jumping out into the middle of this. So this nozzle and the really high pressure fuel 
becomes a really fine mist. I think it's called an atomizer, or it atomizes the oil, makes it into a really thin, really thin mist. And then this um, arcing spark ignites it. And since we would have air from that blower getting forced through here, it's going through these gaps, causing a twirling motion. So it ends up being right past the nozzle and right past the electrodes is a big ball of flame. And that's where your heat comes from, of course. And then it should be able to slide off the end. You have to be careful that this fin doesn't hit the electrodes. Just like so. We have a wire bristle brush here and we're gonna clean these electrodes. And always clean the electrodes before you do anything with the nozzle. Now our electrodes are nice and clean. So there's a special wrench that you use with this. It's got two different sizes built into it. It just slides over like that. We can now loosen this. Oh, wow. Okay. Once you got them broke loose, they generally thread out pretty easy. And that is what our nozzle looks like. 0.75 gallons per hour at the pressure rating. Most of them are based on 100, if I understand correctly. So the different letters mean different things. A, which is like our, ours that we have, means that it's going to atomize the oil in a cone shape, like a hollow cone. B like this 0.7570 degree B is for solid, meaning that that spray coming out of the end of the nozzle is just going to be solid. And then W, where's the W? There's an 85W. W means it's semi, so it could be, it's just a little bit more of a mixture. So we are now going to go ahead and install our new nozzle. They don't need to be too crazy tight. And then you gotta make sure that this is clean. See how we have a little bit of carbon. Don't have excessive carbon buildup. So we're gonna go there. And we're gonna go ahead and slide this thing in. Very important to put this nut on. Get it tight before you <laughs> turn anything on. One time I accidentally turned it on before I had this nice and tight and it was messy to say the least. I can hear some air bubbles going into the tank. It's a good sign it means this is filling up. I'm using this screw. You don't want to take this all the way out otherwise there'll be a little geyser of oil. That means this is full of oil. I just changed the air filter on the system and we're about to actually bleed this unit and it has a bleeder on it just like a brake line for a car. You just need a piece of tubing and you shove the tubing on over the nipple. So I already turned the thermostat on upstairs now I'm just going to turn the power back onto the unit. And it should bring it on and we can loosen this little bleeder port. Oh, that's tight. Okay. As you can see, we're getting some oil. Just brought it on. If we have a steady stream like that, it means we can close the port off. So while you're bleeding the pump, it's possible that the system will lock out, which we bled some fuel back and we might actually have to bleed a little bit more back because it's so it lit. If you get locked out at least with this particular pump you have to hold this button down for 15 seconds before it'll bring it on again. So it, it finally lit. Definitely had a little bit of smoke. That can happen. What I had to do is I actually had one of the spark gaps adjusted improperly. You can look up your specific model to see what the gap is supposed to be. 
but we were supposed to have an eighth inch to five thirty seconds on the direction that way, five sixteenths above the center of the nozzle, and it's supposed to be one sixteenth inch in front of the nozzle. One of the probes seemed like it was a little bit further ahead, so I think it was shorting to the baffle instead of across to the other electrode, which causes ignition problems. So now that it's running, we're gonna let it go for a while, but we're gonna have to confirm that it lights up a couple more times. System's currently turned off, and we're gonna go ahead and make sure it relights, so we're turning it on. Still have a call for heat. This little green light is what tells us if it's lit or not. Should feel more of a buzzing when this ignition coil comes on. So it runs the blower, then turns on that solenoid in the ignition coil right there. There it lit. So, I don't know if you can see the green light. So it is now burning properly. See the glow from the hot fire in there. Scary as ever. But looks like this clean and tune is now complete. So should be good to go. I'm gonna throw the cover back on here and then we're out of here. Last thing we're gonna do is run a combustion analysis to make sure that we're running properly. It's like we're running about 35 parts per million. That's good. It means it's uh, burning, burning good to go.